In this bubble tutorial video, I'm going to take inspiration from this blog post, which describes how you can reduce friction with email confirmations. Uh, and in this case, we're actually going to be using magic links in bubble to do so. But it's describing a way in which when you take a user's email address, you can then present them with a button that opens them up in the right email client. So let's dive into the bubble app that I've got built here and I'm going to put the finishing touches to my magic link login. So I've just got a page here and all I've done is add in an input with a button and then uh, that's all grouped together and I've called that step one and then this is all grouped together and I'm going to call this step two. So let's put the basics of a magic link in place. But before I do that, you're watching this video because you've got an idea and you're wanting to build it with Bubble. And if you want to accelerate that process and get access to hundreds and hundreds of resources, click the link down in the description to join our community over on planetnocode.com. But let's uh, yeah set this up with magic links. So I'm going to add in a workflow and uh, say that this user uh, send email login magic link. Uh, match this up with my login email. Uh, I'm going to say that it lasts for an hour. I'm going to just navigate them. This is a demo app, but you send them to your dashboard page, one of your logged in pages. Send them back to index if it fails. Uh, that's all good. But I also need to move them on from step one to step two. So first thing I'm going to do is on step two, say that this is not visible on page load because I want to it only to be visible if I say show step two. I also want it to be collapsed when hidden. That just means that when it isn't visible, it doesn't take up any space on the page. So on step one, I'm going to do the same thing, say collapse when hidden because I don't want step two to appear below step one. I want it to appear in place of step one. Uh, so we'll go back into the workflow. Uh, edit workflow and you could do this with custom state so I think indeed if you have multiple steps and you would kind of go through step one step two step three maybe multiple steps to a login you could use custom states and then conditional statements on each uh, element to say if it's step two in your custom state move it along but we'll keep things really simple here we're just going to show uh, we'll hide first we'll hide step one and then we will show step two Okay, so that's going to send the email, hide step one, show step two. Now, here's where I'll just show you what this looks like. And remember, if you want to do this well and with good, nicely styled emails, you'll probably want to set up a different transactional email provider uh, to SendGrid. Uh, we recommend Postmark, but Loops is also really good. So, yeah, you then see the email address here. But the next thing we want to do is to uh, show people the right button. But let's first set the buttons up. So if open in Gmail is clicked, what we'll do is say here and we will navigate to uh, an external website, probably open in a new tab just so that if, if it goes wrong, uh, they can come back to this page. And then the destination, uh, I believe it's probably going to be something like HTTPS mail.google.com. Uh, obviously, I should have double checked this. In fact, the uh, blog post here has got it written down. Yeah, mail.google.com. It's been mail.google.com. Uh, okay, and then for the other one, which is Outlook, we can say uh external open external website and uh, i'm not 100 percent sure on this one so i'm just going to say uh www.outlook.com okay now did you know that bubble actually has a built-in way of extracting different parts of an email address and i'm going to demonstrate that to you now by placing in a text element and then i'm going to uh get the data from email value and then format it as I think this is the right one. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not formatted as. It is going to be uh, is it extract. Uh, extract, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Data type email. And so I can say domain, top domain, or alias. So the alias is the bit that appears before the at. So uh, for our website, for example, that could be um, testing at planetlocode.com and it would be testing is the alias. You've then got your domain and you've got your top domain and I think it's easiest to illustrate the difference here. Uh, so if I go with domain first and then we refresh this page. Uh, 
Uh, so if I say test at planetnocode.com, okay, it extracts planetnocode.com as the domain. But if we were sending from a subdomain, say mail, oh, it's, that would be uh, mail at planetnocode.com. So domain is taking everything that is after the at sign. If I just want to take the root domain, I would say top domain. And this is basically going to be good enough for uh, your standard like Outlook, Gmail, Hotmail uh, addresses. So here we go. We would say uh, test at planet uh, at mail dot planet no code dot com, uh, and it should extract just planet no code. And then if we get rid of the subdomain, it's still just planet no code. So let's now set up some conditional um, display settings on these buttons. So I think the easiest way to do this is to say that both of them are collapsed when hidden and not visible on page load. Because for one thing, we only want to show them if it is helpful. Uh, so on Gmail, we will add in a condition and say when input emails value extract domain, uh, we just say is. I think yeah gmail.com then we'd say it's visible now I'm going to copy and paste this but Outlook is going to have a series of other conditions uh, because actually this is a very Google thing of uh, starting up new services and shutting them down but actually Gmail has been consistent uh, so you could have Outlook.com uh, and then what we can do is just copy this and so we could say Uh, hotmail.com and you could do and you know there's live.com there's all sorts of other um, e email uh, domains that are used uh, but yeah so what we're saying here is that if the input contains this value we will show either of these buttons um, so let's run this through as a little test uh, probably just gonna have to use a fake email Uh, so let's try uh, test at hotmail.com and there we go we've got Outlook and if we were to click on that it would take us straight to Outlook and you'd see my inbox. So there you have it that's how you can really enhance your magic links in Bubble.